In this section, we'll go over the steps to perform a conventional circuit breaker timing test with the Vanguard CT7000S3. Before performing any tests, all safety precautions must be observed. Please follow your workspace's safety guidelines and procedures along with the following warnings and precautions. Please make sure that all circuit breakers being tested are offline and fully isolated. For operator safety, we recommend grounding both sides of the breaker before making any cable connections. Confirm that all cables are connected properly. Lastly, do not remove any test leads during testing. We'll be making cable connections per the connection diagram shown here. First, start by connecting the CT7000S3's ground terminal to the substation ground. Now, connect the contact and ground cables for each phase being tested as shown here. Next, we will connect the digital transducer to the CT7000S3 as shown here. Then, we will use the supplied initiate cable to connect to the breaker's control circuit. The initiate circuit acts like a switch to energize the trip or close coil. In this illustration, the initiate circuit will connect terminal 5, which is the positive DC source, to terminal 7 of the circuit breaker closed circuit. On the trip circuit, the initiate circuit will connect the positive DC supply to terminal 9 of the trip circuit. Once you have made all cable connections, remove the ground cable from one side of the breaker. To start performing a conventional timing test, we will select Time Breaker by pressing the 1 key. Now we will press the 1 key to select Time Dry Contacts. On this screen we are going to select whether there is an insertion resistor or not, and for this example we will press 1 for No. On this screen we will select the timing window. For this example we will use a 1 second timing window by pressing the 1 key. Now we will select the trigger mode by pressing 1 for internal trigger. On this screen we will select the type of test to be performed. In this case we will press 1 to select an open test. Now hold down the arm switch and then press the start key to start performing the test. Continue holding down the arm switch until testing is complete. Once testing is finished we will be returned to the main menu. Once we've performed a test we can print the test results to the unit's built-in thermal printer. To print the test results select get results by pressing the 2 key. We are now presented with multiple options for printing the test results. We're going to select Plot Full Chart by pressing the 2 key. Now press the 1 key to select Thermal Printer. And now the test results are going to be printed on the unit's thermal printer. Once printing is completed, you will be returned to the main menu. Next, we will take a closer look at the test results. Here we have a sample printout of an open test shot. The CT7000S3's frequency setting is shown in the header. The frequency value is used to convert the contact time from milliseconds to cycles. Here we can see the date and time the test was performed. This header section shows relevant test information for the test record. This information is entered by the user before performing the test. The test type is shown in this section. In this case we can see that the results are from an open test. The contact times are shown here in milliseconds. The equivalent times in cycles are shown in the cycle column. The measured contact bounce duration is listed here in milliseconds. The contact wipe distance is measured and printed under the wipe column. The wipe measurement is shown in millimeters or inches depending on the user's preference. The delta time is shown here. This is the difference between the fastest and slowest contact time. The travel analysis for transducer 1 is shown here. The analysis comprises the breaker stroke, contact velocity, contact over travel, and contact bounce back. They can be displayed in either English or metric units. In order for the CT7000S3 to calculate the contact velocity through the arc zone, the user must first define the two points on the travel curve. The two analysis points to be used are defined as AP1 and AP2. The AP1 in this case is the distance that is 10% of the stroke and is measured from the fully closed position. The AP2 in this case is the distance that is 50% of the stroke and measured from the fully closed position. The V1 voltage measurement is shown here. The CT7000S3 will detect the on-off voltage transition on the V2 and V3 voltage input channels. It can detect up to three voltage on-off events and record the times. In this example, the CT7000S3 detected one voltage transition on the V2 channel at 35.2 milliseconds. The measured open coil current is shown here. For this example, the initiate current was 11 amps. 
This last section shows additional test information. We can see that the shot duration was one second, there was no insertion resistor in the circuit breaker under test, and the trigger mode was set for internal trigger.